Thank you. Um, first off, I thought I was a face plant coming up here, so I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> um, Vault Curious? That's, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. I like it. Um, by the way, this is the logo that we came up uh, with for our service of Vault and internally. I'm going to get into a little bit of the history of this. I also want to give a little context of the background of our team because it's kind of weird that we, there's a centralized cryptographic services team. We're starting to see other companies create these, and we've been at this for quite a while. <coughs> um, some years ago, Cisco identified that it was having a counterfeit problem, that they were having product getting counterfeited, and we wanted to prove to our customers that, hey, when you bought a Cisco product, it was a true Cisco product, and so we started doing uh, device certificates during the manufacturing process. Now, what the problem Cisco has is that when we create a device, we do a serial number, and that serial number has a date, a time, a manufacturing location, and even a manufacturing line. So that means we can't pre-batch these certificates and send them down to the line and just let them consume. We have to do certs real time. So if you're thinking about what that means, Cisco runs Gosh, 24-7 uh, global manufacturing operations in Asia, US, Central, South America, and Europe. We have to have real-time PKI services running to support all of that. There was a time when I had hair <laughs> when this project started, um, <laughs> but when we realized that if our services went down, we would shut down Cisco manufacturing globally. It was like, oh man, you know, we gotta <laughs> up our game a little bit. But shortly after we started doing device manufacturing certs, um, we started to have to get into software signing. Now software signing, again, was a way of just assuring our customers that the code running the gear that they were getting from Cisco was valid code that you know, was produced by Cisco. Um, and that meant integrating with build teams. Now, if you guys have ever looked at a Cisco portfolio, there are thousands of products, just thousands of these products, and there's different variants of software for all of them. And so we had to build a mechanism to do software signing to allow literally hundreds of build teams to con connect to our systems and do a centralized signing function. Um, we took it on as a centralized function, both on the PKI space and a software space, uh, because we were seeing different versions of software signing. We'd had laptops sitting under somebody's desk running the software signing engine, we're like, no, no, we should, let's, let's do this a little better. Um, actually, we had that same problem with manufacturing space. We saw different attempts to do things. And our executive said, look, we really want to centralize this and put some good standards around that. And so that's how we started about 10 years ago. Um, we're also now doing Cisco's licensing program. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard, Cisco acquires a lot of companies. You know, we tend to buy a lot. Um, and so at one point, we had tens of licensing solutions, and it was a big struggle for us, right, because we're trying to make it easier for our customer. And so we're, we're collapsed into a single licensing solution, and our team now provides the back end for that service. So I'm kind of giving you all of this context, because when we looked at what was happening at Cisco, we were going through a transformation. So Cisco's moving out of just the hardware business, right? We're getting into software, we're getting into as a service, and we said, look, again, we kind of want to take on this challenge, but in a central way, how do we provide function to these teams so that they don't have to, one, worry about it, and then two, we know as a company that it's secure. So we went off to build a key management system. We said, look, we're going to do key management. This is what we're after. This is where we need to be. And we're part of the security organization. But the other part of the security organization, we're in a program where anybody that wanted to put a service into the cloud it'd have to go through this process, right? We have this thing called the Cloud Approval to Operate, Cato. And said, so, oh, you know what? We're gonna go talk to these client teams and find out what they're doing for key management. And there were about 70 teams going through this process. And we quickly realized after talking to them, they didn't want key management. The number one product that they were using was Open Source Vault. And they wanted us to deliver a platform for doing enterprise version of Vault if we could. And that's how we came around to our project Keeper. So we, we looked at it and we said it's a secrets keeper and we just shortened the name and we said, yeah, we'll call it Project Keeper. So what is Keeper? For us, it was designed from the beginning to be a uh, multi-tenant solution. Um, we worked hard with HashiCorp. I know we weren't the only voice in the room asking them to introduce namespace and create a, a way that teams that can consume Vault can kind of have masters of their own domain. 
Um, I'm getting too close to the speaker, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, so we were like, okay, how do we do that? And, and you know, before I go much farther, uh, I do have to say, every presentation just about that I've seen is very technical. Um, I'm a manager. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to see a lot of code up here, so <laughs> I got a bunch of the technical guys from our team over here that they'll be glad to answer any questions and get into some of the details uh, at, at another time. Um, but we also needed, you know, we wanted a highly uh, available service, right? So as I mentioned, you know, manufacturing goes down, that's a problem for us. If engineering goes down because of our software signing services, that's a problem for us. If our licensing service goes down, it doesn't just affect our clients, which we call our internal teams clients, it affects our customers. And so it was a challenge. How do we build a vault environment that, that we know is going to be resilient and operate and meet the needs of our business units as they go out? And, and operate these services. The other thing we are after is how do we go, that Cato process that I mentioned, as we were taking our service into the cloud, we had to go follow the same rules. So we had to go through all the reviews, all the security checks um, to ensure that our service would meet all the security requirements that our information security team wanted. And so we went through that process and we realized if we could help the other teams that are trying to go through this process by just saying, hey, we're leveraging Keeper, they can knock off a bunch of the requirements, just check it off. They won't even have to go through any vetting and, and, and proof and things like you run, to, run into in a typical enterprise version of, the, of this stuff. Uh, the other thing we brought to the table is that we have a lot of experience running HSMs. Um, you know, the, the manufacturing systems that we've had to build, the software signing systems that we've had to deal with, you know, even the licensing systems. We're running, gosh, Brian, I think it's almost 60 HSMs, all high volume, all located in different locations, and, and we have a fairly robust key management program, not in terms of a key management system, but processes and controls. Um, and so we said, hey, if we're gonna have HSMs on ceiling, we wanna own those HSMs. So we provide those HSMs ourselves. We're not using a cloud-provided HSM service for that. Also, we needed to create a, an ability to operate at a very high tempo and high per, you know, performance level. So inside of Cisco, we have priority levels. P1 is the highest you can be, priority one, right? And then in terms of what the application criticality is. So that's a C1. So we run this application, this platform, as our highest available service available inside of Cisco. What does that mean? Well. Hopefully, we don't have problems, but when we do, it means that we'll have an engineer respond within 15 minutes. That our target goal to close that problem is within an hour. Right? And especially as we're bringing on so many different platform teams and, and services, we need to be able to be responsive to give them the, the service that they're going to expect of us, especially come into our environment. We also learned from our uh, experience with our other services that we needed to set up a set of in, uh, environments. So we typically, like normal process, you know, dev, stage, and production, and we're gonna show, I'll show you the production here in a minute, but we also introduced the concept of non-prod. And so for us, the dev and stage environment is all for our team to operate and use and test, right? So in dev, it's just a single cluster, us getting used to whatever version of Vol, whatever changes, however we're configuring it. And then the stage environment from us is to test it with replication across multiple clusters, right? Again, all internal for our team. In our other services, when we had other teams test with us and we would play with our stage environment, let them connect and integrate against that, it caused problems because we were changing things. You know, we weren't always pushing our stage, everything in stage into production. We were trying to make sure everything worked there. So we created a concept of a non-prod cluster. So that is a cluster that we maintain at the same config that we do for our production vault. And that's where we allow our client teams to come in and test and make sure they're comfortable with how things are going to work and, and you know, they, get their, they understand how it's going to integrate and work with us. So it's kind of a little bit different. I heard somebody yesterday talk about they don't use dev and stage. Um, I'm a little nervous about that. We have so many platform teams and so many services that make real lot of money for Cisco that they don't want to experience any downtime that uh, you know, we'll probably keep going with, with our part. Um, by entering into the enterprise agreement, we also uh, have excellent support from HashiCorp. And, um, and I promise I wasn't paid or asked to give you this note. <laughs> I will tell you, um, 
we have quite a few vendors in our space that help us out in delivering our services. Uh, HashiCorp to me has gone from vendor to more partner um, because they've really spent a lot of time invested in making sure that we're successful. Uh, they've actually had other teams from Cisco that go to them asking to buy and they just point them back to us instead of trying to take advantage of that opportunity to sell. It's been a really good partnership. We really appreciate that support. Um, they've been great to work with. So uh, no, no more commercials, I promise. Uh, so right now, here's the roadmap of functionality uh, for our Keeper program. Um, encryption scares me just because of the compute that's going to be involved with that as that grows. Uh, but you know, moving along, um, I'll highlight the things that we're after. One, we haven't got our information security department yet on board with how to externalize our AD. Uh, we're working with them. Uh, other teams are working with them. We expect that to happen here soon, um, and that'll be a big step forward, and I think a lot of teams will be more willing to move on and take on our service at that point. Um, we are having to deal with internal clouds. You know, Cisco's a big tech company, right? Our, our IT department has, I don't know how to word it, it's like 550 managers, there's 5,000 employees just in our IT department. You know, the, the idea that we don't run internal clouds is crazy. We have multiple internal clouds that we operate. Um, and so we're in the process now, and hopefully by August, I think, is what we targeted, Brian, was uh, to have internal vault set up in two separate clusters and two separate data centers servicing those applications. Um, and hopefully that'll happen soon with no, no problems. Um, our future plans are to go into Europe. Um, Asia Pack I put up there, but we're not sure whether we're going to do that. And we're starting to see some requests for having a vault service in a FedRAMP environment as a platform again. Uh, so we're trying to see what that looks like. How does that work? Some of our employees are not U.S. national, and so FedRAMP is really for U.S. government consumption, and they have some requirements around who can service that. So we're, we're trying to see how that plays out a little bit. Oh, the uh, self-service portal. So one of the challenges that we have is when we started talking to these teams, I mentioned there were 70 teams going through this uh, Cato process. Right. So it could be a team of five engineers, or it could be a team of several hundred engineers in the services and applications that they're doing. And we're trying to figure out how do, how do we scale for that. We, we have to automate. You know, there's just no, no way around that. So we're trying to figure out what's the right mixture of self-service. We would like to do self-service just onboarding if possible. Um, we, you know, we have a lot of reporting requests that people want and things like that. So we're actually in the process right now building a client, a client portal. Here's our architecture right now. I don't want to block my, put my big head in your way and block the view. Um, it's real. oops. It's really hard to see all that. The slides will be available. They'll be posted online. You can kind of see what we've set up. Uh, the gray boxes in the bottom are actually DMZ uh, spaces for us. We're running, um, we run in secure data center inside of Cisco data center. Um, and so it took a little while uh, to get that connection up, and that's where we host our HSMs. Now, that was our original architecture because we were just looking at those HSMs as doing the unsealing keys. Uh, but now as we're starting to see some of the HMAC signing stuff for logs and things like that, we're very concerned about the connection speed that we're going to see between our DMZ and, and the cloud, and we're probably going to move those HSMs. We've, we're, again, being Cisco, we have the ability to kind of put things in other places, so we're trying to... Uh, move those HSMs out. We probably, well, we won't plan on leveraging any of the cloud providers HSMs for this again. We actually have a very robust DR infrastructure as well. So as you look at our two clusters in each, in AWS East and West, we've got full backup DR clusters there. So what's happening is you're actually seeing replication going across all four of those clusters. And, and we had, we've had a couple clients force us to stress test that. Oh. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, have us stress test that. Um, and you know, yeah, I don't have any wood to knock on. It worked, it worked great, though. We're really excited how that went. So there's one team that's primarily responsible for doing that in our org. Our organization's made up of about 40 folks, uh, or global in size. And this team is just eight people. And they actually have other services that they've got to deliver for us, big services. They're, they own the... Uh, we have quite a few private uh, PKIs that we deliver from the cloud. They're responsible for that. Um, our public TLS certificate services, they're responsible for that. 
as well. That, that's a whole nother presentation though, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep that off of here. Um, it's, it's quite to ask, quite a big ask of this team to deliver this. And there's no way where this one team can do that by themselves. We're a very heavily matrix organization. Again, it takes a total of all 40 of us helping each other out. But this team is the team that's responsible for the, for the overall delivery of that services. Um, the other team that I'm calling out here is we got one team just completely focused on managing HSMs. Right, so we're running three different vendor HSMs, and I mentioned the numbers before. Each one of those things, it's, you know, it's, it's a whole learning curve to operate and manage properly and then do the key management that comes along with that. One of the things we ran into, though, early were non-technical issues. And you know, I know this conference has been a lot of technical discussion, but you know, the non-technical issues are, are really a big challenge for us. You know, we're a bunch of crypto nerds. We're not business process people. We're not marketing people. You know, we're having to onboard. How do we onboard all those 70 different teams and manage that? You know, we've got eight people responsible for that service. Uh, you know, so we've been trying to look at different engagement processes. I'm actually going to dive into a little bit of our engagement process because we've had to figure this out. Um, and it's like if you're going to take on enterprise as a platform, like Vault for a platform, these are some of the things you need to, to consider as you go. Um, the other was <laughs> to sell this program completely. I had to beg our executives to fund it, to start it, but the, the caveat back to us was you need to recover 100% of the cost of this program. You need to go charge these teams for the service that you're providing. So all of a sudden, we're in sales mode, trying to explain the value of what we're doing for them and how to get that money back. Because part of this process requires them to give us Cisco funny money internally um, and, and, and take care of what we're doing. And then we ran into a really interesting problem. You know, talk about like IT department, right? That's telling you 5,000 employees, 500 managers. We never dreamed we'd deal with a reseller situation inside of our own company. So we had teams that are standing up ecosystems, provide service to other groups, and they go, hey, you know, we'd like to plug you in. What are you going to charge us? We're going to do volume discount for you and uh, things like that. Just challenges we never expected to take on that, that have been um, funny. And again, how do we scale for such a critical service? You know, and I put up here about a tier one. Um, we're kind of running into this with all of, our pro uh, all of our services. We saw a need because of 24-7 manufacturing ops, 24-7 software signing, 24-7 licensing, now Keeper. You know, how, how do we keep our engineers focused on the things that we need our engineers time for? Not all the, I hate to use the term, but ash and trash emails and stuff like that. And so we had to stand up a tier one support service. We actually have uh, tier one people down in Costa Rica and the Philippines now. Just five, you know, it's not like a big thing, but it's, they're down there helping cover us for a lot of the, the minor questions. And they're using ServiceNow and building a knowledge base and doing all that kind of good stuff. So here, here, here's our stab at a sales process internally, if you will. Um, you know, we, 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 just, we decided, that, hey, there's certain steps that teams are going to consume our products are going to go through. And the first one's discovery. Right? So we, we actually track them. We get a team that emails us. We send them a note. We say, hey, here's a wiki. Here's all the information you can have about how, speaker. Um, here's all the information you need to set up your system and get it operating. Um, and then there's a phase where they start calling and saying, how do we use your system? How do we talk to your service? You know, what, what, what are, what's the cost? You know, and, and so we end up in these meetings. And so we call that, you know, our, our, our discussion phase, right? And then the agreement phase is we literally, it's not like a sales contract, but it's like a sales contract. We literally hand a, a document over and have a director or manager sign something because they're going to have to commit to our financial folks that we can move this Cisco funny money internally around to cover the cost of the service. Uh, I actually had a couple business units call their lawyers to have us talk about our agreement document. I'm like, we're still the same company. You know, we're not, we're, we're, you're not getting into a contract with somebody outside. Um, and then we get into implementation phase. Again, mostly they're going against our non-prod, testing against that. We get back into the technical side and then get them into maintenance and production. So the good, the bad, the ugly, and then I added another category, the meh. Um, so the bad. We were slow to production. We started this, I guess the catch word right now is journey. Um, we started this journey about two years ago. Uh, we just went live 
here in, uh, it was March, I think, is when we went, we went live with our first service, uh, with this service. It took a long time. To be honest, it's, a lot of it's my fault. Um, after we kicked off the project and we were starting to see investment for us, I, I kind of, we stopped and we decided to reorganize. So we, we blew up the entire team and shifted around and, and, and got things in place. We were running a traditional dev ops and then a, because we have some systems under a audit, a, com, a compliance team. And we said, no, this isn't gonna work. And so we now have moved to a service management framework. So Brian, who's sitting over here, um, he is a service manager. He owns this service. Um, he owns all the people who deliver this service. He, he is responsible to it. And he has to gather requirements and all the way to the delivery of the service at the end of the day. It was the only way we felt we could scale for this thing. Anyways, that reorganization took time. It took time to get the people on board, to get time hired, get them trained and knowledgeable in the service and get it back up. So, you know, that was a big reason why we were slow. Um, we did have some outside technical team dependencies. You know, I just mentioned that in the data center, we operate inside of a data center, like a secure data center inside of Cisco's data centers. Our DMZs are in there as well. It was no minor feat for our IT networking guys to figure out how to get a VPC connection through all of their data center gateways and then back in through our gateways into our environment. So it was, you know, that took a while to get all that work. Um, the teams have been a little slower. The moment you mentioned that you're gonna charge them, they're not happy. Um, they're looking at the cost of what it is for their product and they don't want any more costs. So we have to go through a process of education again of here's the value uh, of what it takes to come, to come on board with us. And then the, I mentioned it before is, you know, we're now in this position of having to market our service. We're a bunch of crypto guys. You know, we're not really marketing people. So we don't know how to do marketing material. The, the closest we got to was uh, the logo that you saw at the beginning. <laughs> you know, and so, yeah, we're trying to figure that out. The ugliest part has nothing to do with Vault, has nothing to do with the, the team, the service. It's just managing cross charges. <coughs> um, if we go to our finance person and we hand them a spreadsheet of, 70 different teams that we need to get money from and they need to process that quarterly and then manage, eh, anyways, it, it is a nightmare and mess. I wish we could take it on as a centrally funded program and not deal with cross charges. It's much, much smoother, cleaner, and it'll make the conversations a lot better for everyone. So the good, our team has been buried in these data centers for years, right? So again, data center within data center. Um, delivering and building our environment. So the chance to go take on more modern technology and go do cloud, man, everybody on the team was just excited and wanted to jump in on it. So I loved how the team just coalesced around it and took off with this project, and, and they loved it. Um, you know, the platform for us has been incredibly stable. Uh, we've had a lot of good testing over, you know, over the last couple months, and it's been, we're really happy with it. And again, I'm not gonna advertise HashiCorp again, but they, they've been just fantastic. Uh, the meh, uh, I don't know how to categorize, because I, I couldn't put it in bad, can't put it in good, and definitely not ugly, but I don't know, we don't know what our capacity is going to be, right? We're not sure the impact of what encryption as a service, just handing out secrets is going to be on our environment, and we're just bringing on teams. I'll give you an idea, we went live in March, and in the first two months we had 85 million transactions off of our vault, and that was with six teams out of the 70 that were coming on board. And so I'm, I don't know <laughs> what we're gonna be looking at as we keep growing and expanding and, and when we break this thing or when we do have to add other clusters. That's, so that's a little bit of a, a scary area for us. And then the, for us, the other problem we've had has been logging. And that's just been a self-inflicted wound, to be honest. Uh, we started using Splunk. We had a couple, we had one engineer primarily responsible, it kind of took us down a bad path. We didn't really leverage it very well. We said, eh, move it out of the way. Let's you bring in another tool. So we brought in Greylog. Um, really started working with Greylog, liking Greylog, using it. And then Cisco went off and bought an enterprise license for Splunk. <laughs> so I'm like now having to bring Splunk back into our world. So it's just nothing to do with the service at all. It's just been uh, struggles for us. You know, so for us, next steps, you know, dedicated clusters. Uh, I mentioned FedRAMP, I mentioned our internal world. Um, we're looking at better onboarding tools. Again, our goal would be to allow teams to just 
do an automated onboarding you know, method. I'm sure there's going to be some work with uh, migration and stuff like that, but we like that. Um, we're after trying to figure out how to support more use cases. You know, we want this service to be very successful, so how do we make it, you know, provide the use cases to our customers? And, you know, one of the big things is that AD integration for us will be big. We know that'll bring a lot. Um, I already talked about log and, you know, certainly hiring more team members. So as we bring more dollars in for this service, we expect to expand um, that service. I actually went a lot faster than I thought. So. You know, I know we were, we were kind of, there was some confusion about questions, but you know, we've got a few minutes. Uh, if anybody's got questions, I, I can answer most. Anything technical, I'm gonna point at the guys all wearing the same shirt over here on the side of the room, so. And if not, thank you for your time, so.